Over 40,000 species of spiders, the order Aranae, have evolved to use silk for building nests, catching prey, and protecting offspring. Dragline silk from the major ampulate gland of orb weavers has been the subject of various research endeavors for the better part of the past century, due to its incredibly high tensile strength, unparalleled toughness, and surprising elasticity. amazing year. Here's some of that newer content I told you guys about. Here we're just going to be talking science about webs. And not web shooters, but just webs. Spiders. They're amazing creatures. It's time to learn about them. Guys, don't kill spiders. Just learn about them. They're incredibly cool. And this research, you know, while it seems pretty separate from what I've done before, will start to coincide more and more as Dragline Dynamics gets started. So, uh, this is all part of the greater plan, you know what I mean? It's like the MCU, it's all connected. In this video, we'll review the current understanding of the genetic and protein chemistry of dragline silk, and the structure and the mechanics of silk glands, spigots, and spinnerets that serve to transform the liquid aqueous protein solution into solid fibers, and the chemical and genomic efforts to effectively manufacture spider dragline silk or similar fibers for human use. Silk is a protein fiber spun by many insects and arachnids. Silk from the silkworm Bombyx mori is farmed around the world and commonly woven into textiles and frequently used by humans. Silkworm silk has impressive mechanical properties, with an ultimate tensile strength of over 500 megapascals, and is able to stretch to 25% engineering strain before breaking. By contrast, the orb-weaving spider Argiope trifasciata has dragline silk that has been shown to exhibit tensile strengths of over 1200 megapascals, with an extension of 30%. The spider is clearly the superior spinner. Spiders are more advanced than silkworms in more ways as well. While silkworms only produce one kind of silk, orb-weaving spiders have seven different types of silk glands. Dragline silk comes from the major ampullate gland. As the name suggests, this silk provides safety lines that the spider drags while walking to save itself from a fall. This silk also provides the radial frame for the webs that give orb weavers their name. The other glands are the flagelliforms for the catching spiral on the web, the minor ampullates to reinforce the drag lines and catching spiral, acinoforms for wrapping prey and lining egg sacs, tubuliform for the outer coating of an egg sac, aggregates the sticky aqueous coating of the webs, and Pyroform, for joining silk lines to surfaces. The orb-shaped web actually appears to be the optimal design for these materials. While the tensile strength of the silk may be on par with, but not be more than that of steel or Kevlar, the strength to weight ratio of spider silk is beaten only by Kevlar, and presumably similar aramid fibers. This allows a 75 mg spider to use fibers with a diameter of a single micron to build a web weighing just 180 micrograms but with a catching area of 50 to 100 square centimeters. Due to the main function of the web, which is of course ensnaring prey, the web must be able to absorb all the energy of a flying insect without breaking. From the material properties you see here, it is clear spider silk has evolved to be incredibly tough for this purpose, making it one of the toughest materials known to man, several magnitudes more so than Kevlar or steel. Dragline silk is the focus of this video due to its balance of strength and elasticity, Flagelliform silk is also important, as its properties and amino acid composition allow a greater understanding of the cause of dragline's properties. Dragline is made up of two proteins, major ampullate spidroin 1 and major ampullate spidroin 2, abbreviated MASP1 and MASP2. These proteins are similar to the fibroin produced in insect silk. Both of these proteins have a unique chemical makeup and physical structure that lead to the desired silk properties. Unfortunately, spiders cannot be farmed as silkworms are. Their territorial and cannibalistic nature makes this impossible. So researchers have studied other methods of potentially producing the silk in large quantities. Namely, several researchers have utilized gene editing of simple organisms to produce the necessary silk proteins. Some have used the secondary structure of the proteins as a guideline for chemical synthesis of a similar polymer, circumventing the need for genome editing. The secondary structure of the fully folded protein gives the silk its strength and elasticity. This is in turn derived from the primary structure, the amino acids that make up the peptide chain. 
there are common sequences throughout the various types of silk. Dragline silk is mostly composed of the amino acids glycine, alanine, proline, and glutamine. MASP1 and MASP2 both play important roles in dragline silk. The amino acid composition of MASP1 from the spider Trichonephaloclavipes was found using a partial cDNA clone. Later, MASP2 was found, and its amino acid composition was determined in the same manner. The amino acid sequences for MASP1 and MASP2 in several orb-weaving species can be seen here. It's clear to see that many of the sequences are highly conserved between species. The regions currently considered most important in generating the properties of the silk are the polyalanine region in both proteins, and the GPGXX repeats in MASP2, where X indicates any amino acid. It was thought initially that the GGX regions in MASP1 were primarily responsible for the elasticity of dragline silk. However, the more likely candidates for this are the GPGXX regions in MASP2. One indication of this is the high prevalence of GPGXX regions in the single flagelliform silk protein, which happens to be the most elastic variety of orb weaver silk. The amino acid composition of flagelliform silk can be seen here. Note the relative number of GPGXX regions seen here as consistently GPGGX in all three species. Both X-ray diffraction and NMR have confirmed the presence of beta sheets in the protein structure of silk fiber, indicating a crystal structure that possibly contributes to the strength of the fiber. Simulations have shown that the polyalanine regions in silk are involved with the formation of beta sheets. Labeled alanine and glycine residues in silk lead to dihedral angles in the protein that predict beta strand conformations and silks containing polyalanine motifs are shown to be fourfold stronger than silks containing polyglycine alanine motifs. It is widely considered that the polyalanine regions contribute to the silk strength. The GPGXX regions in MASP2 seem to be highly responsible for the elasticity of the fiber. There is a biophysical hypothesis to explain this as well. Molecular simulations have shown that such regions can form beta turns, and thus beta spirals when linked together. The spider silk begins as a liquid aqueous solution of the peptide chain called dope, which is secreted in the tail of its silk gland, and is then accumulated in the lumen of the gland. The protein is then pulled through a narrow duct towards the spinneret, where a muscular valve controls the flow rate and diameter of the fiber. It has been shown that when in solution, unfolded polyalanine chains tend to form polyproline helices. The protein prior to fiber formation could be in proline helix form. This may be the method through which the fibers do not form until the dope passes through the duct, where the polyalanine chains and the GPGXX regions begin to form highly aligned beta sheets and beta spirals, respectively. The overwhelming majority of biomimetic efforts have been the translation of genes implanted in a vector into the spidron proteins. This vector is typically something easy to farm, unlike spiders, such as prokaryotes like E. coli or even transgenic goats. In order to clone the protein in prokaryotic E. coli, the exons in the genetic code for dragline silk needed to be spliced out before it could be implanted in the bacterial plasmid because prokaryotes lack the mechanisms to remove them. One recent research endeavor involves entirely chemical processes, circumventing any gene editing. The results are a pseudoprotein polymer synthesis that mimics the structure of a ciniform silk, the toughest type of spider silk. The process involves the use of amine-terminated polygamma benzyl L-glutamate as a peptide synthesized with other polymer ingredients to create peptide polyurethane ureas with folding structures that mimic the beta sheets and alpha helices in a ciniform silk. One of the resulting polymers had a tensile strength of just 100 megapascals, but the toughness was 387 megajoules per meter cubed, higher than that of both dragline and a ciniform silk. The researchers estimate this pseudoprotein polymer would cost just $10 per kilogram, compared to genetically engineered spider silk being estimated at $300 per kilogram. Much has been uncovered about the secrets to spider silk's properties. Since the discovery of spider silk as a protein fiber in 1907, it has become more and more clear that the primary and secondary nature of the spiderone proteins contribute directly to the material properties of the silk, as no other chemical is present in the fiber to a non-negligible extent. The cDNA cloning, NMR, and X-ray diffraction methods are quite successful for observing the current structure of these proteins and have generated and supported many hypotheses, including the ones discussed in this video. 
However, observations of these phenomena are limited in that the variables are restricted to what spiders have evolved to do. It would be fascinating to see these hypotheses tested with custom silks using genetic code designed to create a certain sequence of amino acids. Then, experiments could be done with clear sets of independent and dependent variables. The spiders themselves could be genetically engineered to produce these silks, rather than a heterologous vector, as a single spider should be capable of producing small laboratory samples. These could provide results that definitively indicate the effect that the presence of an amino acid or a motif has on the silk properties. Using spiders for this may be crucial, as it eliminates the variable of having foreign biology or an external chemical process fold the proteins, and spiders have specifically evolved to accomplish that. It is clear that the problems with genetic silk production are in the protein folding process. Denaturing conditions are currently required during fiber formation, alongside organic solvents and chaotropic agents to keep the proteins folded correctly. This is alien compared to the rheological and chemical-physical conditions of the spider's glands, and may explain why the mechanical properties of genetically engineered silks have been disappointing. The spinning mechanics are just as crucial to fiber formation as the structure of the protein composing it. For this reason, it seems like the pseudoprotein polymer method seems cheaper and more effective than genetic engineering. The research only based its pseudoprotein off of a cineform silk. This process could be theoretically extended to dragline and other kinds of silk, or protein fibers of all kinds found in nature. Dragline silk is one of the most impressive materials on Earth, especially considering it is found only in nature. Due to its unique protein structure, its balance of strength and elasticity is unique, its strength to weight ratio is impressive, and its toughness is rivaled only by other spider silks. The prospect of spider silk vests as a substitute for Kevlar, or spider silk safety ropes to gently catch rock climbers, among countless other potential uses, has led to no shortage of attempts to replicate spider silk in the laboratory, both chemically and genetically. The genetic attempts have not succeeded in wholly replicating the silk's properties, due to problems with properly folding the protein, while the chemical route shows promise. So that's it for our presentation on spiders, and uh... I hope you, hope you guys learned something. You know, spi the spider silk is an incredible material. How it's, it's, its strength is not defined by its chemistry, but by its more macroscopic structure. It's, it's, fa it's fascinating. It's a protein. Man, and I don't know much about biology, but uh, this makes me want to know more. And I hope it does for you too. Well, don't forget to stay safe, stay amazing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.